<laughs> Great. Mia, what did you have for breakfast? I had uh, also a part of uh, Ryan's batch of uh, scrambled eggs with a toast. Amazing. So nice to have someone cook breakfast for you. Not bad, not bad. How's your voice today? It's really good compared to yesterday. That is true. Sounds That's really good, true. right? <laughs> Sounds very like husky, like like en enigmatic. Sounds like a smoked a hundred pack of cigarettes in one night. <laughs> That's a great like ASMR uh, voice, I think. Yeah, yeah we should get yeah. that on. Mm, very nice. And we are all in the same room, uh, which is pretty exciting. Imagine that. That is amazing. Uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, it's my first time here in Annapolis for the Annapolis Sailboat Show. Uh, what do you think? So, like, blast. I mean, this is the first time we were talking to the booth the other day. Like, you never gotten to see, like, the full-on craziness of, like, all the people that descend on the booth and all the fun and the workshop we had the other day. What are your Im impressions? It's it's so great. It's awesome to actually meet all the people who listen to the podcasts. And, uh, you know, we have tons of old and future crew come to meet us here and... Uh, yeah, just like seeing so many faces and hearing so many kind words and uh, encouragement. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. It's great. How do you think it's been this year, Mia? I think it's great. And I love, like you said, August, like on the boat you have like five to eight crew coming and it's amazing. But then here all of a sudden everyone kind of just get in together and crews sail on different trips, get to talk to each other and people who are interested in talking can actually talk to crew and I just love having the whole, like, truly feel like you're getting the community together. You're not just having pieces of the community but like having the party and the booth and everything. Well, I'm, I mean, I, I say, I've said this a lot this week. This is my favorite week of the year and now that you're here, August, to join us and see all that, like, because it's not just the the people at work or at the booth and stuff, but it's like we're here with Ryan and Lee and Tom and Darlene, all our friends that we only see like once or twice a year. Yeah. And but for me, the my most fun event so far this week has been the the party we had at J World the other night, where mm. we had Matt's schooner on the dock. We were shooting the cannon off. We had two <laughs> fire pits going in the grass. We had like I think we ate something like two hundred hot dogs. Went through like three hundred beers and like just one dinghy worth of beer. One dinghy worth of beer, <laughs> yeah. With the old, the old uh, hard bottom dinghy filled with ice and beer, and it's just like the perfect atmosphere and the perfect pace of that like Friday evening crew party that we have. Yeah, yeah. and yesterday I hosted a women's happy hour, and we had probably close to seventy-five women all together in like one room. Everyone just talked to sailing. A lot of people didn't know each other, but by the end of the night, everyone had made new friends. And I think the whole community that you get together, the boat show is so fantastic. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been magical. And the seminar that we had as well uh, with uh, with the, the Cruisers Academy was fantastic. And uh, that's yeah. available. Uh, we left it up on YouTube. Oh yeah, that's so right. You can go and watch. You can go the on live YouTube. Replay. Check it out there. How about that live stream though, August? You, you're a filmmaker. You were impressed. I was very impressed. Uh, yeah, shout out to Aiden for his his setup and his professionalism there. It was great. And Ram's head to the venue that we used was was fantastic. And uh, yeah, no, it's all been been awesome. It's, um, it's like such a big letdown. You're leaving Monday. You're gonna leave. No, you're here till Tuesday. I'm so here you get Tuesday. to meet my dad and Axel who are coming down. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But like, it's gonna like all this energy, and then all of a sudden, like, in, we still it's Sunday of the boat show. We have two more days left. But like, I'm already seeing the end of this. It's like, oh, you have like post boat show blues. <laughs> yeah. It's not over yet. I know it's not over yet. Yeah, no, it's been a hell of a show so far. So it's really cool. Give and it was always next year. I know we'll be back next year as usual. Give us mm. your uh, give us the so so introduce this episode for us, August. Who who are I think it's your episode this week on the podcast. Who did you That's talk right. to? That's right. Yeah, it's uh, our old friend, uh, Johan Amtrup, who is, uh, has been on the podcast before. Um, he was uh, skippering uh, Witness this summer for Greenpeace up in the high Arctic, uh, doing uh, research for you know their different projects. And, uh, and Witness, after, formerly uh, Pelagic Australis. Formerly Pelagic Australis. That's right. And uh, so he, after he had done all of his uh, research up in the Arctic, he was on his way south again, stopped by in Bergen. Uh, so I got to meet him there. I met him on the boat, got a full tour, and we recorded this episode on board. Oh, the no boat. way. Yeah, yeah. That and, is um, so cool. What did you think of the boat? Oh, it's perfect. I mean, it's <laughs> it's amazing how like all of the you know I've sailed a lot up in the uh, high latitudes as well, and um, and this was you know designed and built by Skip Novak after he already had a lot of experience with uh, with Antarctica, and so you can see all like every all of that goes into the design of the boat, and it's so well thought out, and um, 
yeah, no, it's uh, it's really a beast. It's, it's pretty amazing. cool, like how far back this history goes. Because I interviewed John for the first time. I mean, it must have been in like 2016, very early days of the podcast. I met him at the train station in Oslo. Right, right. And we yeah. recorded the podcast there, and like <laughs> this was just like he's this pretty well known Norwegian high latitude sailor, and now he's like one of the core team members who skippers Eastbjorn and like works with us. It's like the coolest thing. Yeah, it's 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 really amazing. And I kind of you know when I got into cruising and the, around like my entire boating life, I've kind of read his books and his his writings and stuff and, and now he works with us it's really really cool it's like pinch yourself so, kind of stuff seriously. yeah 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 that's yeah, it's amazing so um and it yeah it was it's such a such a treat being there on on the boat with him and he i mean he's just a perfect person for that boat and for that job and it was so neat to see so um yeah and i also think it's really cool for our crew when they join eastbjorn and june is a skipper you're not just getting a skipper know the area you know the skip you get the skipper who actually wrote the guidebook for the area so you know you're gonna find all the best i mean he literally wrote rules. a book called high latitude sailing with <laughs> yeah. bob shepton that's right yeah <laughs> other uh, former podcast guy. i mean all these like people that we consider our heroes are like we're now amongst them it's so cool totally yeah that's great so yeah um uh, thanks to john it was really cool to, to to get a tour of the boat and to check it out and to sit down and have a, a chat with him so um cool yeah and we should mention, um, you just added just the other day, August, and had a boat show, three more Eastbjorn trips for 2025, because otherwise you're pretty full up on the schedule. That's right. Yeah, we're pretty much sold out uh, for all of 2025. But yeah, we recently added three trips um, in the kind of late summer, fall of 2025. August and September, I think. We're going, uh, yeah. So we're going from Bergen to Oban, uh, Scotland, and then from Oban back to Bergen. That's gonna be great, you know, sailing through the cross the North Sea, through the Hebrides, and uh, all. Maybe of a stop the, uh, at your all-time favorite harbor in Fair Isle if the it, weather permits. It, it, it could be go straight past the uh, Fair Isle, and um, yeah, and we have built in quite a few extra days on on that trip for that exact reason. So if you have some, if we have some bad weather coming through, or if there's some really nice weather coming through, we might put in a stop at one of these fantastic little islands out in the North Sea, and. Uh, and then we also added a uh, sail training camp at the end of that, so the end of September, which uh, will be, um, again, on the, around the fjords and coasts around Bergen in Norway, where we'll kind of have a little more of a kind of learning focus and try and just explore all the sails on board the boat and, um, yeah, trying to ease people into offshore sailing in a bit more of a slower pace than one of our passages awesome excited for that all right i think our gang just went to the boat show we're lagging behind so uh let's go let's go fire some more cannons let's, let's do, do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hold fast hold everyone fast. on the wind is presented by forbes horton yachts our old friends from annapolis who i'm about to see very soon at boat show Forbes, besides his brokerage listings, is the dealer for X Yachts, and I actually went and looked at an X 4.3 with him in April that one of our former crew was interested in buying, and man, is it a cool boat. It's like a mini Falcon. Um, super fun, super fast, really high quality Scandinavian built. They're built uh, over in Denmark, just opposite of Sweden, where the Halberg Rassi Yachts are built. Um, check out Forbes' listings, and Forbes, remember, can buy or sell any boat, not just ones he is listed so check them out. Go to ForbesYachts.com. That's F-O-R-B-E-S, ForbesYachts.com. If you're in Annapolis, go and look at boats. If you're at the boat show, come and watch us shoot the cannon off of one of the X yachts in the boat show this year. And uh, thanks again to Forbes for the continued support of On the Wind. On the Wind is also presented by Sail Ties, a free app that makes it easy to record all of your sailing experiences in one place. A digital record of all your voyages, certificates, crew, vessels, and clubs. No more adding up miles in a paper book that can be easily lost. With just two taps, Sail Ties generates a beautiful memory of each trip that is fun to share with family and friends. The app runs in the background without internet connection and uses very little battery. Co-founder Tom explains, For us, sailing is about genuine real-life experiences together in nature, not being glued to your phone while a dolphin swims past. Sail Ties is free to use with an optional Sail Ties Plus subscription to unlock even more from your voyages, including automatic historic weather data and grouping voyages into collections. Check out the Sail Ties app online at sailties.net 
or look for it in iOS or Android. Just search for the Sale Ties app. There's going to be lots more happening between uh, 59 North and Sale Ties as we are partnering with them to do some really cool community building type things, uh, custom maps, all the rest. That's going to roll out at Boat Show uh, or around about that time. So stay tuned for more between 59 North and Sale Ties. And thanks to Sale Ties for sponsoring this episode of the show. Welcome to On The Wind, the podcast about offshore sailing. I'm your host, August Sandberg. Ewan Amtrup is an avid environmentalist and one of the world's top high latitude skippers. It was an obvious choice for Greenpeace for their Arctic research expedition this summer aboard their recently acquired sailboat Witness. She used to be named Pelagic Australis and was designed and built by Skip Novak himself. She is a unique expedition sailboat as well adapted to the high Arctic as Ewan himself. Okay, Ewan, good to uh, see you again. Likewise, once, uh, really nice to meet you back in Bergen. Back in Bergen, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, afloat yeah. in Bergen Harbor uh, <laughs> once again, which is uh, kind of our usual uh, meeting spot, yeah. I uh, feel like. It but, is, um, it is. You're on a very different boat this time. Yes, uh, I'm not on Eastburn, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bigger and uh, heavier and uh, quite a unique uh, boat that you've been uh, yeah. skippering now for a while. Do you want to... In- yep. introduce us to uh yeah. to your ship as far as i know it's built only one but there's a new what do you call it sequel sequel <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a so good <laughs> that's a good way of uh, putting it yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's um 74 feet aluminium expedition boat mm. uh, pretty much the brainchild of skip novak Right, uh, and its former name was uh, Pelagic Australis. If anyone recognized that name, it was built in two thousand and three in South Africa, in Cape Town, I okay. think. Yeah, oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, built for commercial sailing in Antarctica, like cold waters. It it has right. been up here before. It was up here on the. Uh, first or second trip I think okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. so it is um, yeah it's a really sturdy uh, <laughs> high latitude sailing boat it is um, surprisingly f- fun to sail it sails very well mm. really well but very cool then again it's a big boat so it's yeah it moves big. moves uh, faster yeah it's fifth tons of sail yeah. we have navy of uh, yeah 55 tons in all and we have about seven tons of diesel three tons of water we have 12 tons in the lifting keel so we our draft is four meter with a keel down and okay. 1.4 with it up and hmm. we can have a, also have a kicker brother so we can beach the boat Right on. So yeah. that's um, that sounds like it would sail quite well. Four meter deep, heavy yep. keel. That s- sounds pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we are twenty nine meter high. I don't know how many oh, yeah. square meters of sail we have, but it's it's a lot when we yeah. <laughs> roll, roll out <laughs> everything and hoist the mainsail. We have a Genoa and a Yankee. And a stay sail on furling, manual furling. Yeah, well, three furlers up there. Uh, three, you showed me. That's three pretty cool. Furlers, and that's and that is manual. It's not usual on boats of this standard uh, of this size. It's usually push button sailing when it comes to over fifty feet or something like that. True. Yeah. But Skip Novak, he his philosophy is to keep it simple and be able to fix it in remote places where you can't pop into a chandlery or call the repair guy or anything yeah. like that. 
Very wise. The, yeah. Um, you just gave me a quick quick tour of the boat here, yeah. and there was a really nice little workshop area out in the yeah. in a very central position on the boat. So yeah, it clearly yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. has priority. So uh, yeah, and it co- yeah, it comes with a workshop, but more importantly, the boat comes with a mechanic, an engineer, <laughs> and that is uh, that, that is uh, yeah, that's godsend <laughs> yeah. for a skipper to have one that has control of everything, and he can fix pretty much everything on the boat. That's and fantastic. we have spears from here to kingdom come. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. I bet. Yeah, it yeah. Because uh, nice. yeah, so, so simplicity um, for sure. But yeah, you do have quite a lot of. Well, you have. A, you showed me the generator, the water maker, the yeah, yeah, yeah. waterborne heating yeah. system, and yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. there's enough to keep to keep your mechanic <laughs> busy. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and yeah. you have a, a generator, big engine. Yeah, solar panels, wind turbines. Yeah, yep. It's a lot of lot of things that break breaks all the time. For instance, yeah. the toilet seat, which we broke on. Oh the, right, there we go. Which we broke on Eastburn too. Classic. Now it's broken here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we got, actually got spare spare toilet seats. So oh, you carry the spare toilet yeah, seat. Yeah, we oh, very nice, very nice. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I guess a good thing about having such a heavy boat. That's um, you can basically put on. Yeah. How many, however much load you want, and it won't yeah, yeah. really affect. No, it won't affect it. Yeah, anything. it's uh, it's uh, uh, aluminum. Is that right? It's not steel? aluminum. Yep. Yeah, it's um, eight millimeters in the hull. Right. So it's quite sturdy. It's supposed to, yeah, you can crush through some ice with this boat. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, but you, sh- as always, you should avoid ice, but you can. She'll make it. Yeah, yeah, she'll make it. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, <clears throat> it was cool when we came uh, along the dock uh, here. I could sort of see the shape of the boat from behind, and you have this pretty massive tumble home sides, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. really rounded yeah. top sides, and um, that's that was really pretty to see on a metal boat. I don't think I've ever seen a metal yeah. boat like that before. I Me mean, neither. No, 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 um, no. It's yes, all yeah. just kind of has this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, a much more flat, angular shape to them. But this was had some had some curves yeah, yeah, yeah. to it, which yeah, yeah. Um, no, adds to um, the beauty and I'm sure the strength too of the yeah. of the hull yeah, yeah. as well. So most likely, definitely, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, so how come you're um, skippering this uh, boat, you and how um, um, how did this uh, <laughs> collaboration happen? <laughs> well, uh, I. Uh, during COVID, I applied for a job as the um, the, the, the the what you, what what was the name again for the project manager of the boat, which is mm. was land based. Luckily enough, I didn't get it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah you would have no. been miserable. Yeah, in that I would have been miserable. And <laughs> I would have sucked big time at that job. So that was a good t- good choice by Greenpeace. <laughs> But <laughs> but they uh, yeah they called me into an interview and because they wanted to talk to me because I, with my background with high latitude sailing they I think they were curious and would see if they could do something with me and we kept in touch and when the boat came to uh, Stockholm for the f- uh, just after they bought it uh, or actually they got it was donated. To Greenpeace, not by Skip Novak, but wow. by um, yeah, some other, uh, some other people with big big pockets. That's yeah. uh, that's <laughs> a, that's a big donation. Yeah yeah, 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 it's really nice. So I jumped on a train, booked a hotel, came over, met Karin, who got the job that I applied for. She's the best there is for that kind of job. <laughs> Very nice. And yeah, I got the tour of the boat, like you did now, and got to know the people. Uh, two of the guys I have on board now, I actually met in Gothenburg. Okay. Uh, in Stockholm. So yeah, yeah, hmm. yep. Yeah. Oh, it was nice. And after that, the um, yeah, the plans for sailing to Svalbard, which we have done on this trip, uh, came together, and suddenly my name appeared on the research application. That Greenpeace hunt, so then, mm. yeah, All right. Then I was the skipper, so there I go. got on board. Yeah, in Bergen, f- two months ago. Right. Oh, so you've been skippering for two months yep. already. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I have a three months on, three months off contract. Okay. 
Wow. So, oh, so this is gonna. This is. Uh, it's not just a one. Uh, oh no no no! I have thing. a six month contract. So, oh, okay. Oh yeah, no one gets uh, because this is a project for Greenpeace mm. as per se, because they have another one in build. So this is a substitute some something. So it's not clear what we're gonna do with this boat. So no one gets a f- uh, f- contract, a long term contract on this boat. Okay, I see. So I'm yeah, as you know, I'm pretty happy with short term contracts. Yeah, you're a, <laughs> you're a free free spirit, you want, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. I don't like that. So <laughs> yeah. no, I'm uh, I'm happy with six months, but we'll see what happens after that. Yeah, 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 yeah very yeah, cool, yeah. very cool. It's um, of course I'm uh, um, I'm excited that you won't be tied up uh, away <laughs> from Ispion for too long uh, either no, no, so no, no, uh, no, no, that no, makes no. me I want makes I me happy yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow i mean i'm um i'm uh, this is like the perfect uh, a really perfect job for you you know with your high latitude experience yep. and and also your environmental uh, enthusiasm it really seems like the perfect yeah, perfect it, thing yeah um, it feels like it it's um yeah it's been a fun fun trip and interesting met a lot of good people because uh, we yeah to, to explain what we've been doing we set out from here sailed to Olsun and then we sailed for 10 days between Jan Mayen and Björnøya that's oh. uh, pretty much in English that's Jan Mayen and Bear Island uh, mm. in the Norwegian Sea doing um, towing a 350 meter long um, cable behind us with four hydrophones at end we were wow. listening for whales particularly sperm whales because they come up uh, from the south to um, yeah eat basically right probably not the best scientific word for it but uh, <laughs> well, whatever you're not i'm guessing you have a scientist on board <laughs> yeah, as well as yeah, yeah so we had <laughs> some super scientists on board so we were listening for whales and we were also having a visual lookout for whales during mm. that pe- period and we saw a lot of whales it's a it was a part of the greenpeace campaign against deep sea mining because right. we were sailing in the area where the Norwegian government are pushing to open for deep sea mining. Mm. God knows why, but yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, we heard. It's pretty cool to hear whales sing and talk. Mm. And we, it was really cool. <laughs> did uh, you have a? Did you have like a speaker rigged up so you could no, hear we them? Didn't. In we, the had a, we had some uh, headphones. Oh, headphones. They, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was yeah. They weren't fight. We weren't fighting over the headphones, but it was pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> and we also saw quite a few um, sperm whales. Okay. White peak dolphins, killer whales, and I'm not sure if we saw fin whales, but the, 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 all the material has been taken by, back to with the Kersneong, Dr. Kersneong, our lead scientist, and it's going to be analyzed. Okay. Yep. Very good. And then, good. Um, so you can, th- this will then be used as kind of evidence that there yeah, is a rich yeah. uh, natural yeah. fauna there that would be disturbed by the deep sea yeah. mining yeah. We're plants. Pretty much, it's it's very um, low taskil, how do you say that in... Uh, uh, low threshold? Yeah, low threshold. Or low... Um, something like that, because it's... It's pretty easy to do. We're just towing the hydrophones oh, right. and listening yeah. and mm. recording and watching, so it's easy. But it what we can do with our means, mm. and we're pr- pretty much doing what the Norwegian government should do to actually map out the area before they fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you would think that they would. That yeah. would be a requirement. <laughs> it, it, you should think so. So yeah, we we're, <laughs> were pretty much doing what they should have been doing. They they are doing some, but they have pretty much bigger re- resources than we have. So yeah, that's yeah. what we were doing. And um, yeah, no, it was mm-hmm. fun, and we had fantastic weather. We had too much, too little wind actually, so we were uh, yeah bobbing about up there. It was really just, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's um. I was going to ask about that because yeah, hanging yeah, yeah. out at ten days behind yeah. between uh, Biona and Jan Mayen is yeah, uh, yeah. is uh, yeah. could be quite challenging. <laughs> it could be. I was expecting way more, but yeah, never above twenty knots of wind. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
more often lower than 10 so we were huh. just having glass sea at some point and yeah no it's beautiful fantastic that's um that's a good thing when you're towing uh, an array of hydrophones yep. i bet yeah. so uh, yeah <laughs> it's really good so um yeah and then we sailed to longyearbyen right dropped off the scientists did you so you sailed directly then from um yeah okay yep. Yep. yeah so um yeah longyearbyen dropped off the scientists and then we had uh, another party hello first uh, in between we had some uh, uh, what uh, the greenpeace called key influencers some potential major donors we had a celebrity mm. from norway tom stiansen it's okay no one expect except the Norwegian uh, <laughs> is an alpine um, star former alpine star and now a tv celebrity on board right so uh and we and then we had new scientists who were mapping out glaciers with drones oh, which yeah. was pretty cool so we sailed up to new olsen of course we went to the bar of course the northernmost <laughs> bar in the world <laughs> Melagre, which was pretty nice and Very then nice. we sailed almost a week from glacier to glacier in that area and recorded the melting of the ice very good yeah yeah no it's cool and a photographer we had who did the same he had he had found a glacier old pictures of glacier so we recreated the pictures to yeah. show how much it has uh, receded oh uh, cool melted. yep cool really i mean cool. well not not really not, cool not, it's not it's cool, uh, but it the project is, uh, is cool but the uh, reality is not cool yeah no, no. yeah no it's um i think i've said that many times before but it's really like i think people think that the global warming and the melting of the ice is like it's just a slow kind yeah, of yeah. generational no. thing it's not like no, no. every like the, the two of us who's been up there kind of year after year you yeah. can see it from one summer to the next yeah, yeah. There's like it's, tons of ice missing, yeah. and some of the glaciers aren't really no. recognizable. No, 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 no. no it's anymore. Really scary. And the day we arrived in Longyearbyen, it was 22 degrees. 22 degrees. <laughs> 22 degrees. And I thought shorts I thought I were bringing and t-shirts the guys to the Arctic. Yeah, shorts and t-shirts, and yeah. yeah, yeah. Oof. It is yeah, yeah, scary hot. And for two days we had 22 degrees, and then it came down to around 13 14 which is it's high but it's at least a little bit more normal but yeah yeah no it's not good wow that's yep. that's rough yep it was was that for a, a specific um project in mind or the melting of the the glaciers just like general no the general the yeah. um, uh, our photographer christian oslund um yeah he was the mastermind behind that project so we yeah mm. it's quite quite fun actually driving around in dinghy sort of a treasure hunt trying to figure out where the people on the uh, old picture were standing and oh, doing yeah. exactly the same holding up the old picture and taking it down and videoing it and taking pictures that well, was really cool oh very yeah, very, yeah. very cool yeah, yeah, yeah. that must be uh that must be very difficult with uh with the ice yeah. being s- having melted so yeah, much yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah but still that's that's really neat yeah the um yeah because i mean some of those glaciers aren't really like when i was up there now last i guess that was in 2021 i hadn't been yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. hadn't been there for a, f- a, c- a couple of years because no. of COVID, and uh, I remember seeing the wagonway yep. glacier, yep. and there is no wagonway nope. anymore. No. <laughs> like, and it was just like I two yeah. years before I'd been there. You could kind of you always tell people, oh, this is called the wagonway glacier because yeah. you have the these two moraine tracks mm. down the t- top of the glacier that looks like a wagon yeah. way, and um, it's just gone. Yep. So uh, it's. Uh, yeah, that must be a no, it's challenging not, um, yeah. mission for you guys. Yeah, the scientists say it's melting. I'm not sure, but it, or if it's four or seven times the pace of the rest of the world, faster. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It That's is. weird. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think it's because when 
all the glaciers, the white glaciers, they kind of absorb the sunlight, but when it's melting, you get the mm. ocean, which is dark. No, sorry. White reflects right. the heat under sun rays, but when the, it um, melts, it's come down to the ocean, which is dark, and it absorbs the heat, and then this... Yeah. It's on a runaway, Run, uh, yeah, it's accelerating like a spiraling, process. Uh, yeah, yeah, effect. Hmm. Heating. Yep. Not cool. Nope. Did you um? Did you get close to the glaciers? Did you have to? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess this would be just uh, perfect. Uh, navigating in front of glaciers <laughs> can be really tough because there is some, um, you know, floating ice around, and also there's the the. The f- ocean isn't charted because there used to be a glacier there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yep. But this must be the perfect boat to do to do oh, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, work. Yeah. yeah. Now we freed the uh, freed the keel, so if we bumped into something and we were going really slow, it would just kick backwards. Oh, so you have the keel down, but yeah, in a kind in of a uh, free position, sort of. Yeah. 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 So now we went, yeah, yeah, on on the short plotter, we were way up on into the countryside. <laughs> 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 so there's no navigation on the short plotters. No, 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 just yeah. uh, just visual. And um, yeah, we rafted up against the ice flow. We didn't step ashore. Uh, I have some, yeah, <laughs> have some health and what do you call it? HMS. Yeah, something like that. Uh, we, don't, we don't want to push it. Yeah, no, that's yeah, uh, a no, good, yeah. good idea. But we were qu- quite close to the some of the glacier fronts. Yeah, when when it collapsed, not not the whole thing, but yeah. Yeah, you can see the. Um, yeah, you can feel the wave. And the and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. cool. But on a boat like this, it's yeah, yeah, it's manageable. Quite, quite <laughs> safe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with all the like the rounded metal. Hall and all the submarine yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hatches going yeah. in and uh, and everything. I, yeah, I think yeah. I think you would have been uh, quite quite safe. Yeah, yeah, but still. Yeah. Was it? Uh, how do you do? You just have a, a depth sounder, a normal sonar. Yep. Go in. Yeah. Yep. I have a normal, normal sonar. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So just yeah, easy does it. Very yep. nice. Yep. Did you get far far north? Up? Uh, how long oh, did just, you go? Uh, we just crossed over to, uh, we're just in uh, New Olsen mm. and on the other side of Kongs uh, Fjorn yeah, yeah okay so we're in that area we didn't push any we had no business going up yeah further up on the t- north side of uh, Svalbard no, no I mean there's plenty up. plenty of glaciers in that yeah, area yeah, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, yep. very nice yeah and um so h- how long did you do that for, did you say? Oh, we were in Svalbard for almost a month. Wow. Yeah. Man, documenting the... Documenting, but we also had uh, some um, uh, waiting time in Longyearbyen mm. between the projects. Yeah, the boat needs a little... Uh, uh, always some fixing and always something yeah. to do and we need some time off. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, no, it's good. Were you? I guess the new regulations up there are not going to come into play before next year. Next is that year, right? Next yeah. year. Yep. Looks that way. Yep. Mm. Did you? Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Did you notice any change yet? Was there less boats, more boats? Um, there were. Uh, no, we were at the end of the season there now because we were in September. No, uh, August. August. Mm. Uh, there were quite a few boats but there was not that many big cruise ships no right because the last time I was up there when I flew out when I was the Eastburn we had seven massive cruise ships at anchor outside Longyearbyen yeah yeah and that was luckily enough not the case now very good. More moderate sized boats like Hurtiruten. She actually had two boats up there. And some of the smaller ones. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's an effect 
of the uh, can't be an effect of the rules that are coming next year but yeah I don't know yeah well it wouldn't surprise me if maybe some of these bigger cruise ships which are not going to be allowed like uh, at least outside of the main uh, it, East no, Fjord next year have they're going to be allowed but they are not allowed to put they, they will be designated areas just below 50 places they can drop people off on shore right so they as far as I understand it, they can actually cruise around. Oh, even the big ones? They can, yeah. Oh, okay. Crap. Uh, but the rules are more, they have to report where they're docking, when they're docking, when they're leaving, or they're anchoring, and yeah, yeah, all that uh, thing. But these guys, they just keep moving, so I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's going to be exciting to see how it is uh, next year. Yeah, yeah, that'll be very interesting. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But as far as I understand it, for private boats, if you want to take your own boat up there, there's no change. And that is good. No. Oh, no. Do private boats, the, the new, can, they can't even go ashore? Yeah, the new rules, as I understand it, is only for commercial boats. Okay. I think. It's right on. Sort of, uh, it's something that's been decided by the <laughs> government uh, or the, yeah, the Storting at the parliament, and there's something being decided by the Sysselmestern. So, yeah. it's a, yeah, I'm not totally, I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And I think uh, it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be interesting just to see. Yeah. I think we, we just need to see what it looks like yeah. when yeah. when the time uh, comes. But yeah. it, I'm, I'm glad you didn't see a lot yeah, of cruise yeah. ships. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So you, did you, um, did you go ashore a lot and, uh, and no. explore or was it mostly? Mostly the other guys. I had to be on the boat. Oh yeah, pretty much because we were moving all the time, mm. uh, and when we finally anchored, it was usually very late in the evening or at night, and up again next morning and moving. But we had a really nice hike in Longyearbyen. Yeah, uh, outside uh, Longyearbyen, I don't remember the name of the mountain, but. Uh, yeah, it was part of the project to, uh, the photographer had. So we hiked up a okay. gravel mountain, as they are in uh, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> small a pile boat. of gravel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's a good good exercise and good good to get out of the boat. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, something other than just walking to the pub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good, for your, uh, good for your health. Yeah. Yeah. Very, uh, very uh, nice. Yeah. So how how was the weather then when you were uh, up further north? Was it oh, it's t- s- sun and t- t-shirts and shorts or uh, uh, no? Just the f- two first days, and then it was more normal. And the wind, yeah, we had some good breeze coming down from New Olsen and back to Longyearbyen. Okay, around yeah, thirty forty knots downwind. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, 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 and it yeah, in a boat like this, that feels like maybe twenty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet. If I'd been <laughs> with these furnace, I probably wouldn't have gone out in that. But with this boat, it's just oh yeah, yeah. That's very matter. nice. I'm just going. That sounds good. I, will, I was almost worried there that you uh, <laughs> hadn't had the experience of sailing this boat in some big, uh, big wind. So uh, oh yeah, no, 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 no. But that sounds no. good. Was yeah. it how? Uh, how is she? Uh, at sail is she uh oh she's uh yeah she's a big boat so she's pretty fast we're on a broad reach it's blowing 20 25 we're easily doing nine ten knots nice. just cruising around without any effort and it's the boat doesn't move particularly much it's perfectly safe to move around on the boat and it feels yeah it feels safe and comfortable mm. very much yep very nice. It was a very uh, the cockpit is really nice. Where you kind of in yeah. behind this kind of uh, wall yeah, of metal yeah, yeah. in a way, yeah. <laughs> which has all the winches <clears throat> on top, which I liked a lot. So you yeah. can actually stand up um, yeah. and do your winching, which is very yeah. And that is quite uh, not not 
just nice, but when you are winching in that big <laughs> Genoa, it takes five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure, yeah. if you had a, just some awkward <laughs> position on your knees hanging over the side, <laughs> that would be a yeah, hellish experience every time. So yeah, yeah, it helps. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Is that a is that a hundred and thirty percent? Yeah, Genoa, something like that. Big one? It's yeah. massive. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, sail uh, area. Yeah. yeah. You do have um there's a pedestal winch yep. on board yeah, but it was in, in front of the um of the main cockpit or the, the yeah. dodger it's uh, what we call a snake pit so it's under the boom behind just behind the mast over the lifting keel um, uh, box or something like that so that we use that for reefing and hoisting the main and that's also a place that feels really Secure because you mm. have the, com- what do you call it? The, the c- uh, combing, combing, the, something um, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the hatches from the toilets and all the um, uh, cabins are. So yeah. it feels um, really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was. Uh, yeah, and about yeah. Speaking of the sails, the bo- the main sail has four reefs. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. And uh, then you have don't have to put up the um, trysail because the fork reef is really really small. Yeah, yeah, nice. And kind uh, of the same idea that we have on on Ispion, though that's yeah. only triple reef, but that's also a much smaller sail. So, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this boat, for some reason, has a fat head. Oh, yeah. Like a square top, square like topped, a square topped mainsail. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I don't think it's the best of ideas uh, because we have to reef it if we're tacking or jibing. We have to have the first reef in because it conf- get in conflict with the uh, aft stay. Oh, so you have a fixed masthead backstay, yeah, and a yeah. square top sail. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's an interesting combination yeah, that I don't think is, uh, I've ever yeah. <laughs> heard of before. I wouldn't have gone with that one, but um, yeah, that's mm. what we got for okay. the moment, at least. So yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's a, that's a fixed backstay, so you can't you can't no, do anything. No, no can't do anything. It. But yeah. no, 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 no. So you have to. Re- so we end up sailing with one reef, yeah. but it is. I've seen a m- main sail up on this two months for yeah, a couple of hours, something like that. Coming out of Shetland now, with it, with it all the way all up, all the way up. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then uh, okay, just before the night, we figure out ah, we're going to take it down to one reef in case we have to drive or something in the dark. So yeah, yeah, we'll put it on one reef. Yeah, yep. you never know, right? Suddenly no. you need to make an evasive maneuver, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Yeah. Uh, you will probably destroy your sail if you try yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah. jibe. So, but we're, we're mostly sailing offshore. But anyway, I would yeah. like I would like to have the a normal mainsail. Yeah. But and the reefing system is quite cool because the reefing lines go, of course, f- from the boom up through the reefing uh, hole in the sail and down and in the middle it goes through the main cell again and down on the same side as it came up does that make oh, sense uh yeah yeah i think to, so to gather the sail oh so it doesn't like so it end doesn't, up in no. large folds yeah, yeah, yeah. and on the falling down of the, the boom. boom and all that okay so it's actually really nice to have it just put huh. on the boom that's a good idea that it's a very good idea yeah is it is it does it add a lot of friction to the system like when you go to hoist it again or no, shake we, the reef uh, no yeah a little bit of course but mm. we have the grinder it's a, yeah yeah it's a lot of friction anyway so yeah but, but um yeah, yeah of course it would but uh and most people don't have the opportunity to have four reefs i guess that's the same on falcon that's why we don't have four reefs on the, because the boom is not built for it, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. you would. It would require some uh, some aftermarket uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. engineering to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. make that happen. Didn't so, have uh, four under it. So this one is has actually has four, but there is ways you could. Uh, but if you 
as a normal sailor, if you're going to do sailing like this boat does, I would pretty much, and you only have three possibility of three reefs. Mm. It's just better to have big reefs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you would have to. Yeah. Have because the f- it's, it's uh, feels kind of safe and good to have the opportunity to have the storm a little try sail as a part of the mainsail, so you don't have to go and yeah. put that small sail into another track Yeah, remove the old one. It's a massive job. It's yeah. a massive, massive yeah. job. Yeah. I, and and I, I think, um, you know, people uh, people end up just not using them. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, when you have been on two offshore passages where on boats where we had trisails and we really needed the trisail yep. but we just like the skipper uh, thought it was too dangerous to yep. put up and yep. he hadn't used it before and yep. it was like, yep. and then you just never end up using it yep. if it's like part of your normal uh, reefing yep. system you end up using it's it a lot easy. more it's more accessible yep. and, um, yep. and because uh, if you don't use it you have to take the decision way before it gets nasty yeah and then it's gonna, nah, maybe a little bit longer maybe it won't come yeah <laughs> and then you're up there at the masts and uh, yeah. it's, it's screwing around with this uh, yeah. into the second track and yeah. uh, the no. halyards and no it's not no not very cool I like this I like this system so we have the fort drift and we have the stay sail which we can roll the reef so everything yeah. gets really small on this boat. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, I guess um, I, 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 I guess it's um, you know uh, the weathers of Antarctica that really uh, uh, kind of designed this boat. Because because yeah. uh, yeah. if I remember correctly, Skip Novak he first had his pelagic yep. boat in, yep. in fifty four um, or fifty six or something like that in steel, a little smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then. Um, and then he operated that in and around Antarctica for a couple of years, and then he designed this one, yeah. kind of uh, having experienced and learned so much on Pelagic, he, yeah. he knew what he wanted now, and then yeah. he he made this, and um, I'm yeah. sure. And the next level now is the Amundsen, which has just been uh, put on the water, and the Vincent of Antarctica, which were launched a couple of years ago. Yeah, Vincent's, I think, two, been around... Two or three years, something like that, just after COVID. Yeah. Or during COVID. I'm not I sure. Don't, but yeah. I'm not sure, yeah. No, the, but um, they, they are three feet bigger than this, and they're pretty... Ex- yeah, they're very similar, <laughs> very like. It's it's <laughs> cool. a, just a... It's just a better version of this one. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I haven't really been uh, nerding out too much about the the new uh, Amundsen, but I'm uh, oh. I'm looking forward to. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sounds like a yeah. cool. Yeah, you'll find a lot of uh, not a lot, but you'll find some interesting on YouTube. Yeah. So okay. If people are interested, just search up uh, Vincent of Antarctica or Amundsen, and you'll find some. Very tours cool. with Skip Novak and yeah. Oh, school. nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, after Long Abbey and yep. then, was it was it a successful mission? Did yep. you find your yep, photographs and it was all everything success? we got? Uh, we did everything we set out to do, so that was really good. Everyone was happy, at least what, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. And then we um, yeah. Had a few days, had a change of crew, and uh, one of the mates flew home, and a new one came in, and then we returned to Tromsø. Right. Yeah, just the crew. There were five uh, sailing the boat. Just, uh, the, yeah, we're the five running the boats, actually. And yeah. uh, we can take up to 12 people on board. Right. So in six uh, cabins, six double cabins. Um, so, but that that was just the crew sailing down, which was kind of nice. Yeah. So yeah. that was just no uh, no mission, no research, no, just no, no, uh, no. delivery. Yeah, just a delivery. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cool. Really nice. Sailed down to Tromsø, took Longyearbyen. Tromsø took three and a half day, something okay. like that. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. It's pretty fast. Yeah. Cool. And um, hang out, hang out a little bit in Tromsø, did some maintenance, and then down here, 
via Shetland. Yeah, you went to. I thought I saw. Uh, yeah, 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 I we, saw you were in uh, Shetland. Yeah, we had lunch in Shetland and then we okay. continued to Bergen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Was that just uh, made made sense because of the uh, no, and yeah, the we, we had to because uh, before we uh, when we came in we we're a research vessel because of the hydrophone. Oh, so it's a um, regulatory thing. So we had to check out of the country, drop off the hydrophone, and come back in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So huh. Shetland, always nice to come to Shetland, even if it was only for two hours. It's so very disappointing to be in Shetland just for two hours, and the be- <laughs> and the weather was beautiful. Oh, it was yeah, just insane. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm not doing that again. No, that's uh, 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 yeah. that's that sounds rough. And <laughs> yeah. it, uh, had you sailed then directly from Tromsø to? Yep. Uh, yep. Oh, yep. Okay. And it took us six and a half day via Shetland from Tromsø to Bergen. Okay. Wow, that's yep. another fast. Fast she's a fast boat. Yeah. yeah, she is. Did you have uh, the wind was uh, in your ah, favor? Yeah, not exactly. There was a lot of engine involved, but right. uh, yeah, yeah, it was a lot of um, bashing. I had a few of the crew sleeping in the saloon for a couple of nights. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. This is probably a very um a very comfortable saloon at sea because yeah, yeah. it's an interesting layout because be- because of the lifting keel the salon is in where you find the aft cabin in most yep. uh, boats so it's all the way way back at the stern so mm. that's probably uh, a pretty comfortable place to be yeah, yeah. upwind yeah it um, is it is and that's again that part of uh, skip of like philosophy which uh, more p- it is a special boat but sleeping before the mast mm. that is not something you would preferably do in offshore conditions we Very know that true. from Eastburn. Yeah, okay, going uh, people going end up in the saloon yep. <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you're gonna get the airborne so and yeah. here we have two cabins just in front of the mast uh, but not all the way because we have a big uh, room in front for a couple of dinghies three engines a lot of safety equipment and then we have the what do you call it again the, the uh, workshop uh, area or the, uh, the with all the tools and um, yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah and then we have the uh, first cabins just in front but yeah. even that gets when it gets bumpy even that gets rough yeah in this boat so, i can uh, yeah. can imagine yeah do you sail with the keel down up when you go no. downwind no i've only used it with the keel down because it's it is a ballast thing yeah yeah oh yes yeah. it's ballasted of course a, yeah, i don't know the sense. i don't do the, that kind of math <laughs> <laughs> so I keep it down but uh, when yeah. I had the Ovni the Olobot I had the Ovni 435 and that that also has a kick up kill mm. but there's no weight yeah. in that so all the ballast is in the hull mm. so th- at that po- with that boat I took up the keel when going downwind yeah. and that and also when motoring in calm condition yeah got a half a knot extra well, very nice yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, um, but um, no, I prefer to have the gill down on this one. It's yeah, no, if tons. you have a 12 tons <laughs> additional uh, <laughs> yeah. weight, yeah, that, that yeah. helps many things. Yeah, so, um, yeah I like yeah. to have that down. Yeah. True. Yep. But it's uh, it's an interesting layout. It's almost kind of like, a, reminds me a little bit of a catamaran in the way that you kind of have two yep. hallways going down on yeah, either yeah. side yep. and uh, mm, of the. Good. Of the box there for the keel and uh, yeah, but it seems to work out really well. Are you happy with the layout? Is yeah, it yeah, really happy with the layout. Mm. So you can you can walk around, going down the one side and coming back on the other. So you have multiple uh, possibilities to get at least to the, to get to the fore peak if you need something there. And mm. uh, yeah, without disturbing people that's sleeping and yeah, yeah, that no, was good. Very nice. Yep. Cool. So mm-hmm. um. So what's uh, what's next now for uh, for you and witness? Um, we are. Uh, I have one more month left. I'm signing off in Gothenburg. Okay. So now we are heading to Stavanger uh, this evening for an overnight sail, and then we're going to be in Stavanger for um, six days. 
uh, and then we're going to Oslo mm. uh, and uh, all this is part of the deep sea mining campaign right so we're assisting events on land yeah two days ago here in Bergen we had an open day a lot of people coming aboard seeing the boat had some events on shore and we're gonna have that s- the same in Stavanger and in Oslo Very and cool. have people sailing with us and um, yeah and then to then to Sweden then yeah. I'll sign, signing off okay very nice so yeah it's a little bit of um kind of uh, s- campaigning or outreach work yep. now yep. along yep. the uh, yeah yeah to get more focus on the consequences of deep sea mining yeah yep that is so uh, we have deba- debates and we're also showing a movie and yeah there's lots of going on so uh, yeah people can always find us in um, Facebook and if they want, if sailors want to come by, and they really should <laughs> in Stavanger and Oslo, <laughs> just come by and have a look at the boat. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. You probably will have sailed um, sailed by when this uh, when the podcast ah yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah, yeah sadly yeah 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 uh, we'll, um, yeah uh, we'll make up for it another year then yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's it um, I know the, the, if you know people are upset about this deep sea mining and want to learn more about this project that you've been doing where would be the best place to uh, uh, greenpeace.org yeah and they will find or greenpeace.no uh, for the Norwegian speaking and yep they will find a lot a uh, lot of information there very good yep yeah good uh, good work you guys have been doing out there and yep. kind of uh, it's pretty nuts that they uh, that they haven't done a marine survey of the uh, yeah. animal life yeah. there before they it uh, and it it takes the scientist says it takes between ten and fifteen years to map out new species, and the government are talking about opening up in twenty thirty, right? And it's just they're in such a hurry, and I don't, I have no idea why, because there's the companies who are doing this. It's kind of one cons- hired consultant that's running the company, and it is. Uh, and the EU is against it. BMW, Volkswagen, Google. They don't. They don't want, want to use minerals from this. And it mm. is minerals. Yeah. Say we get it up in fifteen years. Then, if we track back from today to fifteen years, who? knew how the future was going to be in 15 years it's almost we didn't almost didn't have any internet yeah it was so, a different different yeah. time that's uh that's and true and it's just yeah the minerals we should do a more focus on uh the circular economy using the minerals we actually have yeah yeah like the urban mining stuff that yeah, people yeah. talk about yeah. like uh reusing yeah no totally yeah. it's uh, it seems seems a little old school and uh, old fashioned yeah um, mining is like uh, 100 years ago maybe it was cool <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not cool anymore <laughs> no, it's not cool anymore <laughs> let it go let yeah. it go it's uh, it's out of yeah. out of vogue we we'll try to create some jobs in other sectors than uh, mining for god's sake yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's um, it's cool that you were able to, to to find that and document all that. It made me makes me think about um, Matt Rutherford's uh, yeah, yeah, ocean yeah. research yeah, yeah. project. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the same. Yeah, uh, kind of his um, idea, right? That yeah. Because of the, uh, you know, just uh, now with the connectivity and the mm-hmm. and the modern tools, you yeah. can do perfectly great research. Just you don't have to hire. A, no. Research special like costs a million dollars no. a day. You can no. do them off sailboats. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it makes perfect sense that um, what this Matt Rutherford is doing, and this because it wouldn't be, it wouldn't make sense at all to have one of our big ships, for instance, doing uh, hydrophones, mm. because I would it would swallow a lot of diesel and it costs a ton of money to run those boats. Yeah, 
And instead you can have this boat sailing around with a few scientists documenting. No. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Should have more of this is this boat is a little bit like Greenpeace is returning to their roots when they were firstly uh, yeah, when they were founded. Right. It was just a small it wasn't a sailboat, it was a fishing boat or something uh, as I recall or a, there, there might be some remember. sails involved but it wasn't a proper uh, sailboat but it was more like uh, small scale yeah small scale yeah we'll take what we have totally yeah. and uh, you know makes makes perfect sense with uh, with Greenpeace and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. environmental having a sailing boat yeah, it's yeah, yeah. just uh, yeah. perfect yeah. it seems like uh, a match yeah, made yeah. in heaven so. yeah they have one in because this is owned by Greenpeace International together with the two other boats we have but some of the local offices, I think it's Germany and at least Australia has sailing boats. Okay. Which they are using. But the, because this boat, all the Greenpeace boat uh, offices in all the world can apply. They can send in a project. We want a witness. We want it for this project. Right, okay. And then, okay, this year it's your turn. You get a witness and we'll sail there. Mm. But it is a fight over to get the boats not just witness to patrol the boats yeah yeah Yeah, i'm sure they have uh, many many interesting projects that they would like to do so uh, it's a lot a lot um, yeah Hmm. never ending yeah trying to save the world isn't easy that's uh (laughs) (laughs) no can you imagine how great that would be if you were suddenly greenpeace were out of a job (laughs) like oh i guess we did it guys the world is safe now we can all no. We'll all go home. <laughs> yeah, no. no I am afraid. Doesn't seem. It's uh, just a. Uh, yeah, we just have to do best we can because yeah. it's a never-ending story. This thing. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, We're, um, yeah the uh, the opposing sides has a lot more a uh, lot more money and. Uh, yeah. Um, and they want more money. That's the point. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, know it's a tough tough fight so yep. uh, thanks for uh, thank you for your service so, <laughs> well done <laughs> yeah so, uh, yeah cool that'll be thank interesting you. to see um, what the what the future is for yeah. for this boat and, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely and for Greenpeace and uh, and see see what happens yeah and, uh, hopefully she'll stay in the fleet and probably we should have more boats like this yeah it's really fun Seems like a bit. perfect yeah, yeah, platform. Yeah. And, uh, you seem uh, you seem like a happy happy skipper uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with her. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, very nice. We'll see. Cool. Well, I, yeah. I know you have a busy busy day, you and you're going <laughs> out sailing uh, again yeah. uh, this evening to Stavanger, and um, looking forward to it. You have a yep. whole bunch of uh, crew here now, uh, yep. depending on you. So I'll uh, <laughs> I won't keep you for uh, for too long. But this uh, this was really nice. It was. Yeah. Uh, Thank Thanks. you for showing me around. Yeah, Truly yeah. Yeah. fantastic yeah. boat. And yeah. Um, Thanks. Yeah, it was good. Thanks for coming down. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. All right. Thanks, you. Thanks. Thanks again to Sail Ties for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Check out the app on iOS or Android or check out their website online at sailties.net. Thanks again to Forbes Yachts for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Check out Forbes' listings and get in touch at ForbesYachts.com. That's F-O-R-B-E-S, ForbesYachts.com. On the Wind is a deep podcast about sailing created by 59 Degrees North and hosted by me, August Tanberg, Andy Schell and Emma Garshagen. The show is mixed and produced in Maryland by Lee Cumberland. Episode artwork and website show notes are done by Laura Parent in San Francisco. The intro theme music was written and performed by former podcast guest Cameron Dale, while the outro music you're hearing now is by our friends, the Storm Weather Shanty Choir who have also been on the show. We love hearing from you, so please send us a note at holdfast at 59-north.com. And you can also help us out a lot by reviewing the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. It really does help. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, hold fast. 
And when me mahani was all gone on liquor and the horse, I made up me mind that I was inclined to go to see no more. No more, no more to go to see no more. I made up me mind that I was inclined to go to see no more. As I was walking down the street, I met sweet Angeline. She said, come home with me, me lad, and we'll have a cracking time. But when I awoke, it was no joke, I found I was all alone. My silver watch and my money too, and my whole bloody gear was gone. Was gone, was gone My whole body gear was gone It was when I awoke It was no joke For my whole body gear was gone As I was walking down the street I met Big Rapper Brown I asked him if he would take me in And he looked at me with a frown He said Last time you was paid off with me You took up no score But I'll take your advance And I'll give you a chance To go and to see once more Once more, once more To go to see once more I'll take your advance and I'll give you the chance To go to see once more Sometimes we're catching whales, me lads But mostly we get none with a twenty foot oar in every pour from five o'clock in the morn. And when daylight's gone and the night's coming on, we rest up on our oars. And oh boys, you wish that you was dead or snug with the girls ashore. Ashore, ashore, for snug with the girls ashore. Oh, boys, you wish that you was dead, or snug with the girls ashore. Come all you seafaring lads that listen to me song. When you go a big boating, boys, make sure you do not go wrong. You take my tip when you come off a trip, don't go with any horse. But get married instead and have all night in bed and go to sea no more. No more, no more To go to see no more Get married instead and have all night in bed And go to see no more No more, no more To go to see no more Get married instead and have all night in bed And go to see no more